What if achieving everything you've ever wanted in your life all came down to shifting your mindset? This is what we believe at the Mindset Flex podcast. Buckle up and get ready to expand your mind and get uncomfortable. Welcome to this episode. This is your host, Elise, and today we are talking about looking for yes. We're going to start with an inspirational story today. If you guys haven't heard of Tommy John, because I haven't actually until this week when I read his story, I think your mind is about to be as blown as mine was. He was a baseball player and he played 26 seasons in the majors, which I guess is like super unheard of. In his rookie year, Kennedy was president, just to give you an idea. And in his final year, it was George Bush. So what he did was almost a superhuman accomplishment, but he was able to do it because he got really good at asking himself and others in various forms one question over and over again. And that was, is there a chance? Do I have a shot? And is there something that I can do? He constantly just looked for any tiny opportunity, any window for a yes. That's all he did. All he ever looked for was a yes. And I feel like so many times in our lives, we look for the no. Like we have an idea, we want to do things, but the moment that something comes in the way that gives it a no or closes the door, we take it and we're like, well, yep, there it is. It's not going to work. I'm not going to go for it because there's too high of a chance for the fact that I'm going to fail or that I won't be able to accomplish this. For Tommy John, if there was a chance, he was ready to take it and make good use of it. Ready to give every ounce of every effort and energy, he had to make it happen. And if effort would affect the outcome, he would die on the field before he let that chance go to waste. So let's talk about the three major things that happened to him in his life that really demonstrated this life principle that he lived by. The first came during the middle of the 1974 season when Tommy John blew out his arm. Now, up until this point in baseball and in sports medicine, when a pitcher blew out their arm, that was it. They called it a dead arm injury, game over. You are retiring. Your season is done. But Johnny wouldn't accept that. He looked for alternatives. He talked to doctors. He's like, there has to be something out there. He would not take no for an answer. Was there anything that could give him a shot to get back on the mound? And it turns out there was. The doctor suggested an experimental surgery in which they would try to replace the ligament in his pitching elbow with a tendon from his other arm. And he's like, okay, what are the chances of me coming back after this surgery? The answer was one in 100. But without it, no chance. That's what they told him. And as you can guess, Tommy John took the chance. And he knew that with rehab and training, the opportunity was partially in his control. So he took it. And guess what happened? He won 164 more games over the next 13 seasons. And that procedure is now literally called the Tommy John surgery. So let's look at the second one. Less than 10 years later, His son, his young son, fell from a third story window and swallowed his tongue and nearly died. Even in the chaos of the emergency room with the doctors convinced that the boy would probably die, John reminded his family that whether it took one year or 10 years, they would not give up until there was absolutely nothing left that they could do. And guess what happened? His son made a full recovery. Third example. John's baseball career seemed to finally come to an end in 1988 when, at the age of 45, he was cut by the Yankees at the end of the season. But still, he would not accept it. He called the coach and demanded that if he showed up at practice, would they look at him and consider putting him back in? Of course, the coaches were like, "Um, John, you're crazy. You're too old. You cannot be playing baseball. But he would keep pushing it and he just wanted an answer that if he showed up to the next spring training or wherever they actually picked the athletes, he just wanted a fair look. And that was his question. Would I just get a fair look? Be straight with me. That's what he asked the coach. And the baseball officials answered, fine, yes. 
you'll get one look. So Tommy John was the first to report to camp. He trained many hours a day, brought every lesson he'd learned playing the sport for a quarter century and made the team as the oldest player in the game. He used to tell coaches that he would die on the field before he quit. He understood that as a professional athlete, his job was to parse the difference between the unlikely and the impossible. And seeing that minuscule distinction was what made him who he was. So the first question I want you to ask yourself based on all these stories from Tommy John is how many times in your life have you gotten a no from someone else in something that you wanted to do and you didn't question it? Just because your first answer that you get might be a no, that doesn't mean that it's actually a no. In sales, we learn that people need like six to eight exposures in order to say yes. To give you an example to this, let's say you want to buy a car and the car you want is like a little bit out of your price range and you're not ready to pull the trigger on it, but you're driving down the highway and you see an advertisement and you're like, oh, the car, I need to get it. Then you are driving home from work and you actually see the car that you want in person. You're like, oh, the car, right? That's two exposures right there. Then let's say the third exposure for you is something happens to your car, like something bad happens to your car. That's your third exposure to the fact that you need a new car. Okay, so if we go down on this pattern, it's all of these exposures that are getting you closer to that. Yes, but you're still not ready to make that decision. You're still not ready to give it a yes. And on the seventh exposure, maybe you're ready to actually drive down to the car dealership and look at the numbers and look at the car and pick out the exterior color and the interior color. Same thing happens when Instagram targets you with ads. You probably need multiple exposures in order to say yes. This is the same principle that we learn in sales. Like if you are in sales and you're trying to pitch something to someone and they say no, That doesn't mean that that's a no. That just means that that's a not right now. And that doesn't mean that that person doesn't need the thing that you're trying to sell them or the fact that you don't actually need the car that you want to buy. It just means that it takes us a long time to make a decision. It takes us a longer time to say yes, because our brains are automatically looking for the bad in things. It looks for the scary. It looks for the no. That's what it always looks for, because our brains want to keep us safe. Tommy John wanted something. He wanted to play baseball. That's what he wanted. And no matter what came at his life, whether it was a blown out arm or it was his career ending, he would not take no for an answer. He would go as far as he could in order to find a teeny tiny little window for a yes. And then he would take that opportunity and make the most of it. So you need to realize that if you want something in life, whatever it may be, you cannot take no for an answer. If there is a teeny tiny small window of a yes, you need to take that opportunity because if you get the small window of a yes, now it's up to you to get that full yes. So if we look at all of these things, there's two categories that we can break down the events to, and that's the things that you cannot control And the things that you can control in Tommy John's scenario, he could not control the fact that he blew out his arm. He could not control the fact that his son fell out of a window. He could not control the fact that they wanted to kick him out of the league. What could he control? Well, he could control his attitude towards it. He could control the fact that instead of wanting to give in and give up, he could choose to have the attitude of, no, I'm going to see whatever it takes for me to get a yes. And then if I get a yes, I also recognize that that teeny tiny window is up to me and I can now put in the effort and the work in order to see this through. And so many times in life, we get caught up with the no. We get caught up with the things that are not up to us. Like if bad things happen to us or our parents don't treat us the way that we want to be treated, our friends stab us in the back, we lose a job, we skip out on the promotion, we have a car that breaks down. These are all the things that we cannot control and we cannot get stuck on these things just like how Tommy John did not get stuck on the actual thing that happened to him. What did he get stuck on? He got stuck on the fact that I'm going to do everything in my power in order to turn this around or to get that small window of an opportunity of a yes. 
He never looked for the no. He never looked for the bad things that were happening to him that could victimize him. He always looked for the yes, because if he got a yes, now he was in control. But the things that he was not in control of, he did not get hung up on. And that's what you need to practice in your life. The things that happen to you that you have no control over, you need to let them go as in accept the fact that they happened and you have no control over them. That's it. You cannot control them. So just accept it. But what can you do with it? And can you turn it around? And can you get a yes out of it? Because most of the time, if we fight for it, indeed we can. Indeed, there's always that teeny tiny small window of opportunity to get that yes. I've been trying to move to Colorado since my sophomore year of high school. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. And it was years of me trying and constantly getting no's and somehow ending up in New Jersey and then ending up in South Florida and then back in Ohio and still knowing I'm going to move to Colorado. I'm going to live in Colorado one day. Right now, I don't understand why the things that are happening to me are happening. You know, I don't really understand why God is taking me to Florida or to New Jersey or to Ohio for the things that I want to do, but I'm going to trust the process. I'm not going to try to control the uncontrollable and I'm just going to control myself. I'm going to make sure that I am ready for the opportunity when it presents itself. And I'm going to look for the teeniest, tiniest, smallest window of a yes. And that's what I did. And that's why I live here because I waited for that opportunity. I didn't give up on something that I wanted just because it wasn't happening fast enough. Or just because at a certain time, all the doors were closing. Most of the time in our lives when beautiful things are meant for us and we're supposed to do these great things with something, the beginning of them are always hard and they're always full of no's. And the reason that they're full of no's is because they got to test our character. Do you really want it? Is this something that you're willing to fight for or do you just want things to just happen easy for you? Do you want to earn it and become the person who appreciates having it? I'm telling you, all you need to find in life is that small window of a yes. And your entire life can change if you're willing to take the chance, if you're willing to work for it, and if you're willing to not give up, but see things through, even when everyone around you is either calling you crazy, everyone around you is saying no, saying there's no hope, there's no chance. You got to just ask, well, is there a one in a hundred chance? Is it possible to be done? And if it's possible to be done, do I believe that I can do it? Because if there's a small possibility and you have the belief, you will do it. You will get it done. The only thing you need to remember is to not focus on the things that you cannot control. In its own way, the most harmful dragon we chase is the one that makes us think we can change things that are simply not ours to change. That someone decided not to fund your company, that isn't up to you. But the decision to refine and improve your pitch, that is. Or if someone stole your idea and got to it first, no, you can't control that. But to pivot, improve it, or fight for what's yours, yes, that is in your control. You are always in control of your effort, of your fight, your emotions, your judgment, your creativity, your attitude, your perspective, your desires, your decisions your determination. So focus on the things that you're in control of and let go of the things that you're not in control of. And if you find that small window of a yes, go for it, fight for it, never give up because the only way to fail in life is to give up. There's no other way. The only way to fail is to give up. So remember this and remember today to make the rest of your life the best of your life. I'll see you in the next episode.